All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from a lovely sunny San Diego on a Friday. And what could be better than that? Just one thing. And that would be talking to Larry Levine, who is up in Thousand Oaks, California. How are you doing, Larry? Doing great. I was just down in your neck of the woods like three, four days ago. It's at, You know what? I've been in Southern California my whole life, John. And I can count on my hands, not using all my fingers, how many times I've been down in your neck of the woods in San Diego. Yeah, well, it's uh, it, it, it's. I mean, I love LA too. Don't get me wrong. So, but it is. You know, we have it nice here. I have to say. <laughs> yeah, you sure uh, do. Yeah. So Larry is author of the book "Selling from the Heart: How Your Authentic Self Sells You." Okay, so Larry, let's talk about today. First of all, let's let's baseline what do you mean by authentic self? Because I hear this thrown around a lot now. People talk about authenticity and you know being your authentic self. But what do you mean by it? Well, it, you know, it's I'm I'm gonna define it, but I'm gonna tell a quick story that I think will sure. lead up to this and I think it's gonna answer it. I spent twenty eight years in the most I, I I'm gonna beat it up, but it provided well for my family, the most laggard, backwards, dysfunctional sales channel that ever existed. I came out of the copier channel. Uh, and, and I say this, you know, it's joking aside and all that provided well for my family. But what happened along the way is I learned what was working and what wasn't working by asking my customers, by asking mm -hmm. prospects, what do you like and don't like about people in our profession? And I'm just a firm believer that you can glean so much information if you just ask if you're willing to eat critique and, and just be vulnerable and just ask, set aside your ego, set aside the fear and just ask, people will tell you. And I started to unpack and uncover that. This goes back 25, 26 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what authenticity was. I didn't know what being genuine was. It was just, I was doing the complete polar opposite of what pissed everybody off. <laughs> I mean, if, if you get what I'm saying. Sure, sure. I mean, and, and, I mean, and, that's, and why I say that is because as I started to unpack what I was uncovering, I went on a journey. And that journey led me to some pretty cool conversations and it led me to some pretty cool sales opportunities. And what I learned along the way is people just wanted salespeople to be real. They want them mm -hmm. to be genuine. They wanted them to care. They wanted them to have their best interest at heart. They wanted them to keep their promises. They didn't want them to BS them. And I yeah. packaged that all together and I made it my own in a chaotic sales world that I grew up in. So fast forward to today is, you know, I'm, I'm writing Selling from the Heart and this goes back a couple years ago. And I was prepared to get called out on the carpet on this. Mm -hmm. And somebody sent me a message inside LinkedIn and said, Hey, I want to, I want to, please tell me all the research, all the case studies you've been putting into selling from the heart because it's heart authenticity and all that. Sure. And I said, Listen, I'm going to condense it for the sake of this podcast. Long story short, I just told this person, I said, listen, I don't have a PhD in psychology. I don't have a master's in human behavior. My PhD came from getting the, you know, what kicked out of me selling <laughs> copiers in LA my whole life. That's what I'm bringing. I'm bringing a level that people can understand what it means to be authentic. What it means to be authentic to me is spend some time getting to know yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bringing your, you know, doing the tough work on yourself because you're right, John. People say, hey, I'm being authentic. Well, are you? Are you being authentic yeah. based on what other people say authenticity is? Yeah. And I'm not here to poo-pooey it. I'm just saying, no, no. If you don't know yourself. But if you're, exactly. if you if you're yourself, working at it. How can you go out into the marketplace? Exactly. And it's interesting, Larry, because actually some of the best salespeople I've ever come across have come out of that copier industry because probably gone through the same experiences as you. And actually, when I ran Hathaway, it's been selling. We used to work with Canon and Sharp and a, sure. a lot of those companies. So I, I understand. I mean, and it was tough, tough, tough businesses to be in. Um, but getting back to your point there a moment ago about uh, people just wanting salespeople to be honest and, and, and forthright, uh, it used to amaze me when when I was running Hothwaite that we would engage with companies and their sales organizations and sometimes they would go, oh, we don't call ourselves salespeople. 
we call it, and they have some strange term that they made up. And I said, fine, you know, we, we can do that. But I said, but I'll tell you one thing, your customers know your salespeople. So what, well, I don't know quite what you're trying to achieve by this, but they know you're not fooling anybody. Well, you know, it, it's still no different, John, today than it, than it was before. Sales is sales. We, yeah. we, can, we can spin this and have these big fancy titles that everyone wants to create. Everybody knows you're in sales. Yeah. So don't hide it. Just become the most genuine, authentic, real, raw, relatable, relevant salesperson there is out there and watch what starts to happen. Yeah. And I always say the stuff's not rocket science. It's really mm. not. But you have, because I was looking at the, the book, I mean, you have in chapter two, brutal honesty is the only, only way. And I think that's kind of what you're talking about here is you have to, you kind of have to confront yourself a little bit, right? You've got to go through a little bit of self-discovery, self-awareness and, and make up your mind to, to be open and honest and forthright and all the things that everybody's telling you that, oh, you shouldn't do it. Yeah, well, I mean, let's just look at this. I always say there's three things that salespeople need to always keep in the in the back of their mind, and it's these three things. We operate in a world today where they just don't trust us. Trust in the sales world is at an all time low. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think it could again any lower outside of maybe politicians, but yeah. that's a, that's another conversation offline. <laughs> then if if they understand that, the other thing is is they think that when I say they general society. In, sure. They all think that every salesperson is full of you know what, mm -hmm. and they're skeptical about everything that we have to say. So if we can keep those three things in the back of our head, the only way to combat that and overcome that is be genuine, be real, just speak the truth, be mm -hmm. honest, be genuine, bring your heart to the forefront. And I just say, people are sick and tired of being sick and tired. And if yeah. you can do this, you stand out because the defining moment, it's not how great your company is. It's not how great your product is. It's not how great your service is. The defining moment between you and somebody else is if you can bring sincerity and substance and marry it with your heart to the business table, watch what starts to happen as that person goes, ah, finally, I'm actually dealing with a human being. Yeah, and, and I, lo I love what you've outlined there, because that is because, as you say, you naturally start off and, and people and, and salespeople should remember that they're customers to themselves and should remember how they react to salespeople. But yeah, when, a, you know, a customer or a prospect, they start off from a pretty defensive position, right? Because it's like, you know, they've been brutalized by sales for a long time in different ways. And so they start off in, a, in with a little bit of a defensive position. But if they suddenly realize, hey, actually, you're not a threat to them, you're actually here to help them, you're, you're honest, you're genuine. I mean, that defense will come down very quickly, but it will open so many opportunities. Yeah, and, and it's not hard. In fact, I asked a friend of mine just the other day, who happens to be in the finance department of this organization who has to deal with salespeople. And I asked this person, I said, help me understand when you really unload on somebody. When I say unload, John, I'm just talking about mm -hmm. you open up and you share yeah, what's yeah. on your mind and, and, and so forth. And this person said, when that person on the other end starts to be a real human being, mm -hmm. it's just something that just happens. He goes, I can't put my finger on it, but it's how that just natural flow of conversation happens. I can sense BS, but I can sense sincerity just as fast. Mm -hmm. And when I know somebody is there to truly help me and is asking engaging questions and peeling it back. And when I say peeling it back, I use the term pulling back the covers a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'll open up. And I, that's what I want the sales profession and the leadership to really hone in on is we can make this as hard as we want. And I think the sales profession's <laughs> done it. And, you know, if I want to spin this around a little bit, mm -hmm. we I'd like to 360 as they always say, well, you know, buyers are mean and buyers got their defense mechanisms up and, mm -hmm. and so forth. Well, rightfully so, because the sales world's done it right. They've trained the buyers. So in the world that I live in, we must be proactive and we've got to serve up the best versions of ourselves. And if we can do that, we start changing the course of perception because perception's yes. reality in my world. And sure. you're perceived one way by the buyer and your customers, you perceive yourself in a different way and there's never alignment. 
So if we can mm-hmm. just, just lay down the guards and just open up our hearts, watch what starts to happen. But it, it's one word that I, I just have to throw out there is vulnerability in sales is not a bad word. Yeah, and and I, I agree, but you know, I think that's where people get, uh, you know, they get very hung up because obviously nobody wants to lose a sale, nobody wants to lose an opportunity. Salespeople have quotas, they've got pressure on them, and all of that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, uh, again, if you put yourself on the other side of the table, what do we want from a salesperson? Is we want we want you to tell us something we don't know. We want you to educate us. We want to trust you. I mean, we want all of these things. And as you say, if you if you em, embrace this, you're going to stand out. I mean, you are going to stand out because they're going to go, oh, fantastic. Somebody who's actually listens to me and actually genuinely seems to want to help me. Yeah, I always, I always say, you know, tell me something that I can't find mm-hmm. on the Internet, yeah. right? Something that I can't, something that I have to go past page one on Google. Bring yeah. something to the table. That's going to educate me. And that's why, you know, I share with people, I go, all you got to do, raise your business acumen, raise your level of business conversations you have, clearly articulate your value, engage in a healthy, normal conversation that at first may not be a sales conversation. Mm -hmm. But you have to understand how to transition it from John and I are just speaking. And now John and I are having a business conversation. Yeah, but I love that you that you brought up that point uh, because one I've been uh, mentioning many times over the last number of years is that you gotta have business acumen. You've got to understand the the business of business and the business of your buyer and the market and the industry that they operate in because you can't have you can't have value added conversations if you're at a very superficial level and if you don't really understand how business works. No, because I I, t- I talk about how does how do how does anyone in sales get equal business stature with somebody? Mm-hmm. You know, and I get the blank stares, John. They go, well, "What are you talking about when you say equal business stature?" And I just say, "Well, let's just open it up and roundtable this." You know, who are the people you're calling on? If you happen to be calling on C level people, right? CFO, CIO, CTO, CMOs, whatever C acronym is out there. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be as knowledgeable as them, but just walk, talk, and act like them. Use their language. Don't use sales speak and sales jargon and buzzwords, right? If you're calling into the IT space, you don't have to be an IT nerd and, and so forth. You don't have to, but at least understand the world that they live in. Speak their language. It's just like, you know, if if you're going to go move to a foreign (laughs) country for six months, don't you think you have to learn at least how to communicate in their language yeah it's a good lesson everybody business speak 101 exactly i mean maybe that's a good lesson maybe they should send everybody to paris for a day just and say go to paris uh, and in the morning speak english to all of the parisians and see how they react to you and in the afternoon try two or three words of french and see how they react to you and the reactions will be like a hundred percent different you know, it's a crazy analogy, but it holds true in the business world, right? Mm-hmm. Is yeah. sales speak, salespeople speak sales jargon, and they mm-hmm. think that everybody understands their sales speak. Well, they don't. The fastest way to, in my world, if you really want to get engaged with somebody at that buyer's level, whatever that buyer's title is, speak their freaking language. Yeah. Yeah. And I love you have a a section, a chapter here on the hard work mindset, because um, this is my soapbox. And I, and again, I'm starting to put in, I'm starting to put in disclaimers in this video. So (laughs) I'm sorry if I'm harping on about something that I've said in a countless other video, (laughs) but, but we live in this, we live in this shortcut culture where where hard work is almost looked down upon right and yeah. and i still believe that it's one thing that you can't ter- teach people by the way i don't believe you can teach people skills if you can't teach people hard work it's something you need but hard work matters right it, it, it does and um I'll, I'll share this is i had to i grew up in the school of hard knocks and here's the mm-hmm. school of hard knocks and i love my dad like there's no tomorrow my dad's long retired but I grew up with a father as a rocket scientist for the United States Air Force. Wow. So my dad got a PhD in aeronautical physics from two Ivy League schools by the time he was 20 years old. Wow. And here I am, right? I double major in college in marketing and health science, and I wind up selling copiers my whole life. Total freaking polar opposite of my father. But there's a point here that, that 
is was ingrained in me is school and education and mindset was massively important. Now, when, mm-hmm. when my dad grew up in, in the world that he grew up in, you just stayed at one job forever. And that's what you sure. did. And you became the best at what you did. That was the mindset. Well, that transferred over to what I did. It, and it's just, I chose to get into sales. He didn't say, hey, son, go get into sales, right? My mom didn't say, hey, Larry, go get into sales. But what I took is I chose the world called sales. And in doing so, I signed up for some non-negotiable things. And those non-negotiable things was I had to do certain things every day. Mm-hmm. And I was harder on myself than any sales manager ever was. And that meant I had to work on my mind and I had to work on my heart. No one had to coach that to me. That's just, that was just me being me because I was in more dysfunctional sales teams with more dysfunctional managers than I was functional. And I worked harder on myself. So I did a lot of inward thinking and yeah, a lot of mental gymnastics along the way. Uh, but and, that's and, why I write about it in my book is there's nothing wrong with a hard work mindset. You know, success doesn't come by walking into a dark room and flipping a light switch on, John. Yeah, no, it doesn't. And, and, and the thing is, and I love that. I love that fact that you said, you know, I chose sales. I chose to be in this, in this business. I chose to be in this job. And here's all the things I had to do to be successful. I do think, and this isn't just for sales, this is for everybody. I do think sometimes people have to take a step back and ask yourself, why are you doing what you're doing? Right. Yeah. I mean, really, what is your object? What is your motivation and what is your objective and what you're doing? And and is that enough to drive you to be to do your best at that? And it doesn't matter what it is, but it ha- there has to be some motivation there. There has to be some reason that you're doing what you're doing and that will drive you to do it the best that you c- can do it. I, I mean, I just I just learned a long time ago I wanted to get into sales because I love the art of conversation. I love the art mm-hmm. behind connecting with people. I love the fact of bridging relationships and connecting in and who knows who. I lo- I loved all that stuff. And it just so happens the best way I, I figured that out is to get involved in sales. Yeah. But your point is, uh, and, and it's a good, and as we, as we end here, uh, we kind of come back, we were saying, yes, you know, sales has had, you know, a, a poor reputation over the years for, for a number of different reasons. But what you just outlined there is you got into sales because you wanted to communicate with people. You wanted to have with people, you wanted to join the dots, you wanted to provide solutions. And it's a wonderful noble endeavor sales and i think that's the and and i love your i love your title like selling from the heart because to do it well you have to put your heart into it you have to and um i'll I'll kind of i'll I'll leave everyone with this thought and it's and again this is how my wacky brain works john (laughs) but just bear with me this is non-scientific right no anything as i always say you know everyone wants to go harder mind right and i said listen We all know what happens if your heart stops beating, right? Yeah. If our heart stops beating, we check out a life. Yes. So without a beating heart, our mind doesn't functionally work properly. Mm -hmm. So if we don't bring our hearts to the forefront, if we don't bring our hearts to what we're doing, then we're operating, in my opinion, from a world of a broken heart. Uh, And we'll never fully function. So all I'm asking is it's mindset and heart set. If we just work on this, and again, this isn't PhD rocket science level stuff here. This is just real world stuff that when your heart's out of whack, your mind's out of whack. You can't function properly. But when your heart's in it, watch what starts to happen. And I know this because if I always say business is personal. If we can just look at how we do things at a personal level, we bring our heart to our personal relationships, whether that be with our significant other, our close Mm -hmm. friends, our family. Hopefully we bring our heart to what we do. Yeah. No, what that's prevents beautiful. us from doing that in the sales profession. Yeah, no, that's, that's a be- think about. beautiful way to wrap it up, Larry. So it's Larry Levine. The book is Selling from the Heart, uh, sellingfromtheheart.net. Um, all of Larry's information is going to be in his contributor bio and links so you can find out more about him. But before we go, Larry, tell people a little bit more about yourself. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I, I mean, I, I said in the beginning, I came out of the office technology channel. I spent almost three decades in it. I realized about 2015, beginning of 2016, that I was going to push the button on things that impacted me. So I started a movement around selling from the heart. Nobody outside of the LA marketplace knew me. 
And in the span of four years, I always say words matter, message matters. And all I'm bringing to the forefront through my book and through the Selling from the Heart podcast is the sales profession can bring sincerity, they can bring substance, yeah. and they can bring their heart to the forefront and watch what happens. And in the world that we live in today, that mm-hmm. is digitally driven, that's socially connected, we're mobily empowered, that we got to learn that we got to bridge how we act with people face to face. And we got to marry that online in the most authentic way possible. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, Larry. Listen, it's been a pleasure. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRN. Larry, this has been a lot of fun. I will see you all for another expert interview soon. Thank you. This is awesome. Thank you, man.